Testing the microphone, can you hear me? I may have to fix my noise gate. Again, I do it. Oh, HK is going to tell me it's no hat Wednesday, and it's not even Wednesday. Good morning. Be like, we'll we will literally put on our streaming hat. Literally put on our stream. How's everyone doing today? It's a, a rainy day on the east coast. I hope everyone stayed safe from all the weather again. I say that like today's not Thursday. <laughs> right, is it Thursday? Is that where we're, today's Thursday, right? Yes, Thursday, April 11th. Just wanted to make sure they were all on the same page. <laughs> Thursday, April 11th. It's already been one of those mornings for me, so that is. I just realized that I have nothing to sit here. That has to get remedied. Give me a moment to grab some water. I find it funny how I can always start my days being like, wow, I'm two hours ahead of everything and really be like, ah, oh, I'm so, I got all this done. I mean, like, and I've actually done all kinds of stuff around the farm. Like, I've lost another cucumber plant to what I suspect is a bunny rabbit. Although there was definitely something in my woods last night that the dog was terrified of. So he usually goes out and barks at stuff. And this time he went in the distance to bark at the thing gave one woof, and then it came right back. Like, and he stood behind me the whole time. Like, as I'm inching closer. And I've got my little flashlight, like, shining off into the woods. And I, I mean, I see reflective eyes. There, There is something back there. So I'm thinking it was either a deer, or a bear, or a cougar or something. Because it was big enough that I heard it, le like, rustling the leaves around. So not, like, raccoon, possum. It was, it was big enough that I'm thinking at least a deer. At least a deer. We have seen bears around here before. But I feel like the bear would have made more noise. But my objective was definitely to scare off the deer. So when I went to get something sharp and come back, it was, um... Not there. So. That is what that is. That is what... I guess I, I took... My mother thinks it's not... Like, well, if I end up dead somewhere, check the woods. So that's where it's this creature that killed me. Somewhere in the Somewhere. Did you see that Meryl Streep movie? Yeah. It's a good book. It's by James Corden. <laughs> I think there was a lot of good got a lot of good people in that movie, and James Corden he's, he's a late night show host. He's good at carpool karaoke enjoy that kind of thing but is he like a renowned singer I think he'd like to be so morning wake and bake I would like to say that I um, waited reading 
book that um, made me super sad this morning. Like, so the description of the book is my kind of genre. It's uh, post-apocalyptic. Like, this is even like post-COVID. Like, it's a recently written book. So it's post-COVID, and they're now in the super flu that's killed every kind of world. And the main character is a homosexual. And so I was like, oh, wow, I'm, you never ever see uh, literature written. And I'm sure there, there probably is that I just haven't found. I'm not good at finding, like, science fiction, LGBTQ novels that aren't really all about the relationships and the sex and all that. Like, I feel like the vast majority of LGBTQ novels have just, like, an explicit amount of sex in them. Just, just the ones that I've come across. Because I'm like, that's not realistic. Unless it is, and I'm just maybe I'm just living the wrong world. Like maybe I think it's a gratuitous amount of sex because I've never been in that situation. But I just can't imagine your life and all you can think of every time you have a, 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 a brief rest, but it's do it. But maybe, maybe that's what it is. human nature probably is telling you to bone constantly when you're on the run for life. Like spread your seeds, save the civilization, save the species. Kind of monkey brain situation. Maybe so. Maybe no. Do you have any thoughts or opinions about that? I also listen to myself. I, I watch back my recording. I'm starting to feel like that I have this very Delala-like quality. I don't know if anybody even remembers who Delala was from old radio shows. Probably the, like... 2000 she's like hearing people's love stories and giving them life advice and then plays them a, a sappy song like this is this is dedicated to you very delilah Delil today's background music brought to you by 12 hour of free background music copyright free music theaters and stream it's by the relaxed mood never listened to them so far i like it Cheery. Thanks for thanks for, if you're watching the channel later. Thanks for making this free music for me and my stream. A lot of people enjoy. So welcome to a quietly curated stream. Chill, positive. Affirmation. Affirmation generation today is I am organized. As somebody who does not want to lie to themselves, I can that one. I just sent an email to a colleague this morning that I was like, do we still have this meeting tomorrow? And she was like, no, that's in two weeks and the time is wrong. So I had it for tomorrow at 930 and it was actually two weeks from now at 7. And that happens to be the same day as my dog grooming appointment. So I need to find out how early I can get him. Good morning, Silver Mag. How's it going? Thanks for being here. Off to work again today? I can't wait till you have a day off, and I'm going to be like, wow, what does Silver do with his day off? Probably just plays video game and catch up on house stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, I feel like if it were me, and I worked every day, but like two days out of the month, I would be dying. I'd be drowning in back chores. House would be falling out of pieces. House would be dirty and la like laundry would be a mess. I probably wouldn't have a clean kitchen, clean dish in my house. He'd be playing Octopath Traveler 2. Is that a real game? That really sounds like something you just made up. Morning, HK. How's it going? Gas. Caught in 4K. <laughs> Wait. Are you watching this stream in high definition? Oh god, my face must be awful. I think I, like high definition is definitely the worst thing that ever happened to television. Oof. Oof. Remember those soap operas from the 90s? When everybody had that, like, bossy, shiny... 
filter over it so nothing nothing was really clear like everything kind of had a blur you were like did i lose my vision or is this just the show just mount farming final fantasy mount farming i mean i guess there's lots of games that have mount Lots of games that have mount. Indeed, indeed. It's supposed to rain here today, which is good. I mean, I just put in cucumbers and tomatoes, but the bunnies have eaten two of my cucumbers. Ooh, the Heidelin mount. That sounds. Dirty? I'm gonna mount Heidelin. Too far? Not far enough. Final Fantasy has always been about just spending time to get digital things. And if I'm, I, I just really have gotten to a point, if it does not need, like if I don't have a functional need for it, I don't need it in my life. But there's so many things I need functional needs for. Like, I have reduced my outgoing expenditures a great, great deal, trying to reduce the capitalism in my life. And there's still things that you just have to keep buying, like soap. Paper towels, toilet paper, toothpaste. Like things that you just have to have that I can't make myself. Brushes, no floss. It's like all, all the personal hygiene products. Like homesteaders must have really smelled bad back in the day. That no, no personal. I mean, I can use distilled vinegar to clean my clothes, which I could make, but uh, it's easier, certainly by laundry. So, till the apocalypse, I guess I'm going to continue buying stuff, but that means i got to make a profit somewhere. It's always about that hustle, always about that side hustle, way or the other. I am organized is the affirmation generation today. Maybe if I keep telling myself that, I will as my life. It does make me feel really guilty like I look around at my nasty desk and it's covered in like six inches. Actually, I'm planning to host a MTG draft event next weekend. I made a custom sets of cards, AKA draft key. So, Magic the Gathering, soon based on the card situation in MTG. I still don't know what a draft cube is. And I played Magic the Gathering when I was in high school, but not since. And I believe they have digital versions of it now, right? Like, that's kind of. genre of game has branched out into many things. I was kind of thinking of um, TFT is kind of like a, the League of Legends version of Magic the Gathering. It's a, it, that's, that was an auto chess. It's a whole different genre. Or what's the Hearthstone? I was thinking it was like Magic the Gathering, Hearthstone, and League of Legends has one of the, has one of their versions. I don't think it's like Wild Rift. I don't play that one, but it's very Hearthstone like. It's different characters. Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. At least it's not a Monday. At least it's finally warming up. 
Oh, trading card game. So there are, oh, that's the genre, trading card game. There are others in that genre. I'm gonna super nerd myself out, but when Magic the Gathering came out originally, well, came out in America, I'm sure it's been around forever, probably something else, but at the same time, I wanna say early 90s, there was a Star Trek The Next Generation trading card game that my family played because we were very Star Trek nerdy people. And we liked playing that kind of thing with uh, Star Trek themes. Like, the, like the land masses were planets. Like it was, it was, it was a cool game. It was very well thought out, but it was almost the same rules as Magic: The Gathering. But they'd made this whole system based off the Star Trek universe. It was pretty cool. But I'm a Trekkie. I do hope for the positive future. I've never understood people who can be one or the other. Like, if you like space fiction, why would you not like Star Wars and Star Trek? There are different reasons, different genre. I mean, they're the same genre, but completely different views on the universe. Completely different storytelling methods. Both really great for what they are, but nothing alike other than our space. They get all the space elements. Like, Star Trek is boring. Mm. I thought we were friends, Silver. <sighs> Shot to the heart. I think um, it depends on which ones you watch. There's been so many, and like nowadays, next generation, at least to many normies. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're, we can still be friends, and you can have differing opinions, Silver. I was just giving you a hard time. I just think, um, like, Deep Space Nine got good in the third season. Like, it got really action-y packed once the Dominion came in and started, like, fighting and stuff. Like, that's one of my, one of my favorite Star Trek battle scenes is the Dominion coming through the wormhole. Deep Space Nine is all tricked out with every weapon. Like, they knew they were coming in enough advance notice to be like, we have a lot of firepower to throw at this little hole that they're sending. Like, it was a crazy battle scene. It's a good one. It's a good one. But that's because I like explosions and space futuristics. Like, uh, the plasma detonator torpedoes didn't align with the dilithium crystals. Phase modulate the power screens. Fire torpedoes. Modulate the screens. I, you know, I, there. People saying a bunch of random words and high-pitched panicky tones like, oh my god, e pluribus utum, ex black 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 You know, just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're saying. You, you, you are acting out. It's giving me the, the heart racing, like, ah, oh, the action scenes. But they have a lot of uh, life lessons built in. Mount dropped twice in a row and lost both. Oh, that's because they know you love running that dungeon. So they're like, let's just keep him in here. Like, they probably have some cheaty algorithm to be like, we can't let the best DPSer get the first mount. That's, you know, you love those random mount parties, but once you are like, okay, I've got my mount, like, how many more am I obligated to stay? Am I obligated to stay till everybody gets their mount? Like, this is one of those mounts that only drops once a month or something, and I'm like, oh, so we're gonna keep trying this for another hour or two? Wow, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I uh, it's it, maybe I'm too ADHD to play Final Fantasy anymore. I, I just can't sit here that long. Fifty six more months. To get the token. You'll get it before the fifty six. Yeah, but that for a couple more runs is Debatable. I liked those episodes. I also greatly appreciated the exploration of Virtue. Oh, absolutely. 
that like the I had a really hard time with the they them their pronouns. Like I just I just couldn't wrap my head around the grammar of referring to someone as a plural. Until Dar just Star Trek Discovery. They really helped me wrap that around. And I was like, wow, this is like the metaphor for life. But Star Trek Discovery had a character in there who preferred they, them pronouns because they were two people. Like, they had a trill inside of them that gave a ghost. So, like, this person could actively communicate and speak with the rest of the world, but was this person. So they they were a they. Like, they were two people put together. And that apparently is how Star Trek explains transgenderism, is that this person doesn't identify as one or the other. They identify as both. Therefore, they are a plural. And I'm like, oh. That took me a minute to, like, really... Oh, even being a member of the community, it still took me a member to like, like I was all for it. Like you, you do you boo. I don't. I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to call you whatever, but I totally had this friend in Hawaii that was transitioning and preferred they them's, and it was awful for me every time she. Her name was Mary Jane, and every time, see, I still did it. Her name, their name was Mary Jane, and it's just so hard. But I got over it. I mean, like. I, but, I mean, I don't know. I, I definitely avoided hanging out with her because I was like, I don't want to offend her. And I obviously slipped sometimes, so it's it's a whole deal. But Star Trek Discovery helped me wrap that around my head now, so it's a whole thing. Also, it would be cool to pin today's positive affirmation in the chat. If we came in late, we can see it at least. Absolute. Maybe. I'm not sure if I even know how to do that. I can post it in the chat. I really can't spell, like, at all. <laughs> this bus check's not helping me out. <laughs> because it's an I, not an E. Hey. There it is. Oh. In this message. Unable to pin. Something went wrong. Let's try again. See emotes, bouncy emotes. I still don't. I don't know how to. I don't know how to pin it. It says I can pin it in this thing. Also, I can pin other people's message. Interesting. Am I just not able to pin my own message? Is that maybe that's just you can't? Yeah, it looks like I just can't pin my own message. That's weird. Do you feel like that you missed a whole lot today's positive affirmation? I see it as I am organized. I just tell myself that. I don't know if it's really going to get me there. But it does kind of guilt me. As maybe the fact that I'd be saying it all the time makes me like, ooh, I am organized. Uh, I should probably clean. I am organized. Let's, let's, let's start with that. I'm looking at this from my awful death. 
I should clean it today. Speaking of rainy days, I guess rainy days are a good day to clean. I probably need to get some of that done. I am still harvesting marijuana. Did I tell you that, guys, lately? Uh, would y'all like to see pictures of the marijuana? Are we, are we into that? I could put them in the Discord. Or did not try to do this on. Uh, the recording problem is the problem. I am organized in my own way. <laughs> See, you had to add some things to the the affirmation. I put the uh, YouTube in the clips and videos. If you want to go back and check that out? I think I'm gonna put in a photo. Uh, maybe I should put that as like. I probably need to yeah. if I just put it in the discord then I can put it up on the stream then just go over to the disc you look there's my pretty picture so far, that was the prettiest bud I have collected, just because I like the purpling of the leaf ones. I have a little machine that trims the bud for me. So this is the before I used the machine. That's how much greenery and like leaves or stuff are left around, and then I word the machine around for a little while, and this is what your post-trimmed buds look like. I probably could have done it for longer. I think I took them out afterwards and, like, hand-trimmed some of the other bits. So pretty. Did I see the eclipse yesterday? Or was it day before yesterday now? That My sister took that photo of the uh, cloud cover, and I was like, ooh, she was, she was real pissed about having clouds. Oh, uh, it it is one hundred percent legal for me to um, grow marijuana in where I currently live. So I don't know. How, I don't know. And like, I know that Twitch doesn't have have a problem with it. YouTube does have a problem. Oh, you're like it's giving you N Walker vibes. That's cool. Like, not like that's the end of the story or anything. We're talking about some N Walker. I was definitely thinking. Like when that, when that New Jersey earthquake happened, and um, the Statue of Liberty was wobbling around, you're like, uh, "This is not the right time for the Statue of Liberty to fall down." Speaking of end of days, I, I think it's pretty better. And as far as the algorithm goes, I won't tag it. As, like I won't, I won't put marijuana in the tags or anything so I don't know if how the algorithm's going to be able to tell <clears throat> that I said anything other than the words marijuana but that might be enough to get me demonetized or de-algorithm because I, I don't think YouTube is pro-weed so they don't want to be anti-weed so they don't have any, like an official stance but they can control the algorithm and nothing with any kind of weed content is ever like put up on anybody's for you that I've ever seen. Even like I subscribe to several channels who do exclusively weed content. I never see it recommended in my page. I have to go like seek it out. Okay, I'm gonna leave you this moment. Give me two seconds, I'll be right.
Apologies. Like I said, unprepared to exist today. Uh, I think the question is whether the bots can recognize the plant or unless someone actually reported it. I think we'll generally be... Well, right. I mean, it's not like... Worst case scenario in this particular thing is that I would get demonetized or de-algorithmed. And it's not like anybody watches these things. Anymore. Actually, I should say that. There are... there are, It looks like there are about three people that, like, dedicatedly watch my videos. It's probably you guys. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate your support. And I post it everywhere, but I'm I like, and I'm very hesitant to post these things on my personal Facebook page because there are some people I work with. Well, work it's strong. It's strong sense. Yeah. There, I volunteer. So the people that I volunteer with, um, and then they kind of sort of want to work with. I don't know. So that's a catch twenty two. I really need some life advice from you guys. I've got like three paths of direction that I could go. The one that I want is I get to sell marijuana, stream, play video games, just live my life. There is no security in that income, like at all. Like our governor just de like didn't sign the uh, recreational bill, so like we still can't sell it here. So I don't know how I'm gonna make my money about that. I think I said I was going to make this a non-profit and then take donations and then this is a free gift. That's probably going to be some legislation they'll be like, nah, you can't do that now. Like, cause it, the, the whole point is they've already decriminalized it. They've made it not illegal. They just have not set up the legislation on how they would want to sell it and tax it. And I'm like, y'all are so dumb. The longer you wait on this, the long, the more money you're missing out. So, so crazy. Might be nice to have a streamer version of your social media. I kind of do. But nobody's on that either. It's I think there's Fire of Life 2018 on Instagram and Facebook that I hardly ever check or post things. Social media. <laughs> My Facebook is uh, like quietly curated positive me. I just uh, the nonprofit that I work for uh, that I volunteer for is very positive me me and I'm, I love it. It's one of my favorite things about my volunteership is that people are usually very positive. It's, it's so nice and so refreshing. And I play a role in my organization that I'm usually the person who's cheering up, the person who's being the negative Nelly, and that obviously makes me have to be positive. They're coming to me with all this sad stuff, and I'm just going to be like, yeah, that's not really how it is. It's really positive. It's this instead. So that's what we did. That's why I'm like, I don't know what this is. I keep saying, we get together, we chit chat every morning. I'm like, I, I, I enjoy having the routine of doing it all. And I'm, maybe that's what will become more of it. But my other path, I went to the community college the other day, and they have a mechatronics program that lets you learn how to program, like, assembly machines. And if anybody's followed the channel before, it knows I play video games that do that for fun. So I probably would thoroughly enjoy having these big beasts of machines that I've got to figure out why they don't work. That would definitely be up my wheelhouse, but that's a two-year program, and I would have to find some part-time job to do while I was trying to take classes. Factorio in real life. I mean, I was thinking more satisfactory, but Factorio is the same sense. If you haven't played, if you haven't seen Satisfactory, that's a really cool game. I have it down. Four, five, four.
There we go. I do have satisfactory. Try to figure out if I can get the screen. Right. Oh, I like they've changed this. Hit the functionality. Not that. I use the program Streamlabs. They're pretty cool. Let's reset. Okay. Fix a few things. Sometimes I want. It's also loud. The game, how's the game sound volume for it? Satisfactory. You literally play from a first person perspective, are building giant human sized factories on an alien planet. There's something so nice about this because it's just all alone, no real combat, building stuff. A space elevator. It's cars and trucks you can drive around. Gosh, I don't remember all the buttons. It's been a minute. It's my inventory. Nor do I have any recollection as to what I was. It's probably been months since I've played the save. And it kind of looks like I was setting up some kind of. Oh look, I have a, I have an objective complete, so I can go launch the space elevator. Let's go do that. That'll be fun to see. I really thought it was B, but it's not. Uh, is it Q? Uh, Q. That's what it is. And plop down a car. Hope I have some fuel. A little bit of fuel. And now we can just drive the explorer off a cliff. Wow! More fun to drive the explorer in the dunes. This would be fun. This would be something I would do in real life. Yeah. I love that it's got skid. I love that the. Uh, mechanics of gravity work in this world, like, it's awesome. And hey, look, there's an automated truck that stopped because it didn't have any fuel. Oh no, it has rolled over. Uh-oh. What you love about that? Uh, reset. Uh, that is definitely not as easy in real life. <laughs> flip it over <laughs> in real life, you gotta actually get out and flip it over. <laughs> Alright, how about this for real life? Just when you get where you're going, you want to park it? Uh, uh, now it's in your pocket. Love that. Can we get that for real life, please? Thank you so much. Okay. Wow. 
I remember the front of the space elevator. I think it's up inside. There are videos of people who play this game. Satisfactory. He saw some YouTube play it. Seems pretty fun to automate some stuff. Who knows? Maybe you can make technology that unflips the car in the future. That would be really awesome. There's the control panel. Somebody built this factory in a weird way. Did that. All right, so we're gonna launch this into space. You ready? We're gonna actually drag the button down, which I love. Watch it seal up. Still making one of the components for three already. That was nice. But that just unlocks a whole bunch of stuff at the hub. Which is here. So you can pick your own next goal. Which I wish life was also like. You could just be like, what's my next goal in life? Who needs FedEx? Am I right? I mean. That probably is run by Space FedEx. Like, <laughs> if you think about who's going to be carrying, like, doing logistics of, like, Earth is future, it surely will be FedEx and UPS. They're going to be the first space ship people. They add some inventory. Ooh, see, I added a whole bunch of modifiers to this one in the last game, but look, they have solar panels and wind turbines. Oh yeah, I forgot I made this, like, extra hard because I added up all these drive through coffee shops. In space? That what you're, this is going to be drive through coffee shop in space? Or did someone just mention? Oh my god, there's a teleporter? There's a teleporter with the ad- oh. Yes. Talk about making the game changing. Holy cow. I gotta make 50 high speed connectors for that. Gotta do the whole processing. That's man. Greater. This is gonna do. Faster logistics. Can't wait to get the jetpack. Hallelujah. Monorails. <sighs> That's always nice. Pipes. But I mean, like, really, your first set should be to, like, next step should be to set up the automation of those products. How do I get to playing Satisfactory? That is definitely not where this stream, this, this like, the game just sucked me in. I just wanted to show it to you. <laughs> Because I, obviously, I haven't played it in a thousand years. But that's just addictive me. I'll end up sitting here for hours playing video. And I unlocked new. I have, I have beat the game in a prior playthrough. This is a. Uh, redo. I went back and added a whole bunch of mods on that second playthrough. I also downloaded Endless Space too. Are we gonna play that? We might go stream some later today. Are you gonna are you, are you gonna be around later today? Back and see if I can find anybody else who wants to play. That'd be fun. Do a multiplayer stream event. Endless Space 2, everybody. Probably pretty cheap. It's an old game. <laughs> uh, I think they've added more stuff to unlock since. Oh, I mean. I 
yes. That when they probably did, they probably have. I think Alpha One just came out, but I, it hasn't been that long. Like it's only been a couple months since I beat it. Like that playthrough right there is super new. It was only on like tier two. That's why everything is just crazy and sprung up everywhere. Like I feel like the majority of your time satisfactory, like mid to late game. It's just trying to make your stuff look pretty and organized. Like, I need to make this whole factory. Like, plop! There's a factory. And I just recently discovered that you can do the, the blueprints now with the mods that let you build a whole factory. Like, you can build the whole building and set it up like modular factories. Like, you build build a building in a blueprint that's got an in and an out for your ores and your out processing, and everything is already set up and organized well inside the factory. So you can just bloop, 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 bloop about little blo boxes of factories that make things go in change your machines but like the ratios are already set up you and then once you create the machine for it like say iron ore or whatever like you will infinitely ex like expand that because the math is the same on all of them so it does make it a whole lot easier like you're probably not gonna like set up a blueprint for your nuclear power plant factory, but wood for your iron, copper, you know, those basic resources that you need them to turn into finished products, but you have to go get them from, because I, I, maybe it's just me, but I think it's much more efficient to go to where resource node is and at least refine it into ingots before shipping it places. Like a lot of people take their rare, their ore, ship all their ore into the factory and that just seems silly to me. I, because by the time you're at where, okay, I want to build a factory, you need to be at least to like phase two of the logistics so you can get the speed up enough to get factories working efficiently. Anywho. <laughs> the argument of efficiency. I think that's what the, the Furthest Frontier has got me sucked into. I just recently figured out that they have a thousand population caps set in the game. And I was like, why is this never going above a thousand? I was losing my mind. I kept putting buildings and I was like, I've got 2,000 homes. Why? It's only a thousand people because it was physically a game limit in the settings for population cap. And I was like, oh, well, oh. So now I have to go back and restart that whole thing. And I could totally stream that if people wanted to watch Furthest Frontier and see me build the city from nothing. Now that I do it for the third time, I'm just so addictively into it that I could do that. I don't know it would work. The, the Raiders are still an issue. Not good at controlling weapons. I'll die. Which might be the objective of this game, because if the soldiers don't die, and it's usually the villagers. Like, they're throwing 200 people at us, and I have 50. It would be nearly impossible for me to afford to pay. Oh, we can we can play silver. We can play Civ Six anytime you want to. I'm gonna download it right now while I'm thinking. You want. HK, you got Civ Six? Are you a, like, Civ 6 shark? Like, are you gonna, like, murder me? I know I have six. I have not played Civilization VI since May 21st of 2023, but I have played it for 580 hours. He does not. So what you're saying is to make even more soldiers and ignore the... Well, I mean, but if you ignore the villagers, you wouldn't have the gold to pay for the soldiers. I have Civ 5 as well. I have all this. Like, I, I just looked at them. I currently own games in that genre. Galactic Civilizations 3, Galactic Civilizations 4, Sid Meier's Beyond Earth, Sid Meier's 5, Sid Meier's 6. 
and a whole bunch of other peripherals and DLCs. So the three main, main, well, and that's not true either because Humankind's not in there. Or uh, EU4. Now that's a game I would love to find a group of people who knew how to play. I feel like they would trounce my ass. But it's one of those games that I've attempted to play for so long. Civilization still classic. Still classic. You know what I've always wanted to play multiplayer was Baldur's Gate 3. I think that'd be fun. That's basically like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, but you don't have to do all the math and rolling of dice and such. I mean, I think, uh, like, having played Civilization and many other types, like, Age of Wonders 4 is killer. Age of Wonders 4 is killer. I don't know if either of you have seen Age of Wonders 4. Do you have Bald Do you have it already? You've got Bal you've got Baldur's Gate 3 silver. So we just need to find a fourth and a time that we to which we could do it. I'm currently trying to replay the dark path. Um and I'm not good at it. I'm not good at it. I'm not the one. I will tell you up front that I generally play a lawfully good paladin. In the first play, paladin, I played of Saluna. <laughs> and that made for some interesting dialogue choices, actually. So if you haven't played through as a priest of Saluna, or Shar, I would suggest. <laughs> now that I say it, I'm like, wow. Wouldn't it be fun to go as the priestess of Shar so then you could just not have Shadowheart? Like, fuck that bitch. Am I the only one in the world who doesn't like Shadowheart? I think I'm the only one who doesn't like Shadowheart. I said that to somebody else and I was just like, God, if she wasn't a cleric, I would not have even taken her because she was so annoying at the very first bit. I definitely am in love with Astarian's voice and the person who plays him in, in real life. Ooh. ooh. Okay. So, I tried to romance Astarian, but wasn't evil before. Didn't really work out. Don't think you can choose Shar as your deity because of Shadow Art. I, I want to say, you know what? I don't think I have it downloaded anymore. No, I do. Oh my god. Will my computer run Baldur's Gate 3 and stream at the same time? So, oh, it looks like they've had some updates since I last played. Oh, right. I remember why I stopped playing Baldur's Gate, because it got to the point where I was playing the Dark playthrough, and I had to kill Halson, and that breaks my heart. I love Halson. Talk about a love interest. Oof. Halson was my boy. And I'm like, I can't play this without Halson. He was my favorite. So I took a break and I'm gone back. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of hot fixes here and there. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of great, like, in a world this uh, malleable? I can only imagine how many crazy things. We could forget the bear scene. I didn't sleep with him as a bear. I was like, I want the real you. Not to mention, it's a bear. Like, if I was gonna have bestiality fantasies, I don't think it would be about a bear. Like, like my face. Ugh. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna try a new game. 
Let's just see if I can create one. Have you done multiplayers before? I don't really even know how it works. That would have been cool. Yeah, beaten one of a couple. So you actually played it with a couple of friends before? That's nice. How, do, how does it work? Like when you get people to dial in, I didn't even it's worth it. Tamora. I don't know if anybody watches uh, Acquisition Incorporated. I'm sure they all have some built-in hidden lore somewhere that you would discover in the right universe. But I played it as Saluna it's the first time. There was lots of creative around her for obvious reasons. Sad days. Probably should have switched that so y'all could have seen it. We only had three, so of all will control. I imagine y'all would have to like, as a group, decide, hey, what's what's our AI gonna do? <laughs> I mean, if you're role-playing as characters, that's that's a whole different thing. Oh, I guess there's a multiplayer option. Wow, there's just a whole bunch of like random people. In this can you just like join people's random games and play one of their characters? Be like, yeah, I'm gonna get in there and fuck up your shit. Ah, that'd be funny. Yeah. Fuck about it. I mean, it could be worse than an AI. <laughs> wow, they actually even have land. You could do a local area network party. That'd be. Cool. That's. I mean, like. I'm impressed. Does it let you go into different places? Can you split the party in the multiplayer? If you join a current session, you get to create a custom character for that session. So when someone takes a companion, it turns. That was definitely my chosen chosen playstyle was to summon a whole bunch of things. The first time I went through, everybody that I played with had like two summons, and we would just throw elementals and quasars and stuff. I, I would just li literally flood the thing with minions, and while the enemies are trying to kill the minions, then we start using real damage spells. I'd be like, everybody throw all the minions, owl bears, etc., etc., etc. Made sense to me. Like, those people that are coming at you with swords are going to hit something. So, you better throw something at them to hit. That was always my opinion. Because, I mean, obviously, the AI makes the logical choice to kill the summon first, because it's easier to kill than a player, A and will do as much damage as a player left unchecked. So you're like, uh, gotta kill the summons first. But, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Works out either way. If the AI were to come at me, then you still have just like a damage turret. And they certainly were gonna come at me if I didn't summon something. Like, that's just how it is. 
That's a pretty good move. The AI usually aim for those with the little first, right? Summon a Quasar, it takes a hit. <laughs> that might have been a double crit from the fighter or something across the room, but you're like, yeah, that was worth the spell slot to avoid that damage. As the healer in me always says, it's better to avoid the damage than cure it. But I played White Mage. I was just like, everybody's got regained. Done. Good. I'm gonna be over here snacking. <laughs> uh, well, it looks like we're coming into an hour. Did we decide if we wanted to uh, play games later? I imagine Silver's going to work, so probably not. Have a good day, Silver. I don't know if I'm gonna play games. I, it's hard for me to commit to a time frame playing games. I'd be down, but it's close to my bedtime. You're like, you're about to go to bed now, right? Like, that's crazy for me. What time is it where you are? Maybe later tonight, yeah. H hit me up on Discord. I'm on, I'm usually playing games in the future. For sure. And I might just get online and play some fun for, for the first two years. I don't know. Let's see. It's rainy. I'm pretty much caught up on most of my stuff. 10.30 p.m. So it's literally a 12-hour difference. It's 12.30 a.m. That means you're, like... Does that mean you're, like, directly on the opposite side of the world from me? Is that how that works? That's pretty a deep thought. I drilled through the planet. I could be in HK's locale. I'm gonna get digging right now. I'll see you in 100 years. I got a really good shovel. Can't wait to get to the molten core part. But it's gonna be the best thing you've ever seen. I saw, what was that movie with Brendan Fraser where they took the tunnel and they, they, they dug through it? Oh, it was like the world's worst uh, awful B movie. I am technically 12 hours ahead, so technically I am from the future. So it's the 12th there at 10.30 p.m. But still, don't ask about the future. I would only ask about the lottery number. It's just, if you ever come across those from ahead of time, let me, let me know and we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll cut you in half. Easy peasy. I guess I'll need a Star Trek Star Trek episode to teach me that too, just to get me to understand it. Well, okay. Um, if you're watching this over on the YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Um, that would be really helpful to let me know if you're out there. Please comment on some stuff. Let me know what you want to see. Like, I read everyone and will respond to all of them. So, follow me. Comment, like, subscribe. Um, that's how we encourage this. I will bring it up in chit chat in the next day if somebody's commented on. The, the video from previously. I will bring it up the next day, and you can watch us live on Twitch at 9.30 to 10.30 Eastern Standard Time every day. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you on the flip side, my friend. I really need to get a stream deck where I can just like press a button and change the, change the stream, like a professional streamer. But those are like 80 bucks. I don't want to find it. Is it worth it? You just get to look at me be awkward for 30 seconds. Bye, HK. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.